2004 was my Annus Horribilis. It was the year that changed my life. It was the year that my dad died. And his last words convinced me to retire early at age 44. In this video, I'll share those last words. They convinced me to quit my business at age 44 and retire early. Up until hearing those words, I was ploughing a completely different course. It was a course that would have probably have led me into an early death. More about that later in the video. In 2003, in the summer, I was playing golf with my dad. He seemed in very good health. He'd had a condition for quite a few years since he was in his mid fifties. It was a form of leukemia, but it was well under control and it never really affected his life. So in that summer of 2003, we played golf and he was still playing to a handicap of 14, I think, if I remember rightly. He was a really good golfer, a lot better than me. I played off about 18 at the time and he always beat me. But as the summer turned into autumn, his health slowly deteriorated. We went on holiday in the autumn of 2003 as a family. Uh, my mum, my son and my wife, we went to Disneyland in Paris and he wasn't feeling so good. Um, although he put on a brave face and he still managed to have quite a bit of fun. We had another holiday planned in late 2023 to take in the New Year celebrations. It was on a cruise ship in the Caribbean. But by then his health wasn't good. He'd really had deteriorated even since the trip to Disneyland. But we still went on the holiday. However, he spent most of his time in the cabin. He wasn't well at all. And when we got back in the January, he walked into hospital and unfortunately he never came out again. When he walked into that hospital, I think he knew he was dying, but none of us realised he was. So it came as a great shock when his health got really bad. We visited him as often as we could, pretty much every day. And I remember the last words that he said to me. Here's what they were. He said to me, look after my grandson. I'm not going to be here for very much longer. I want you to make sure you'll always be there for him. Here's the reason why my dad's words had such an impact on me. Because the simple fact is, at age 43, I wasn't in a good place at all. I was a workaholic, overweight, absentee father. My whole life revolved around my business. That included my social life. I worked long hours and I very rarely got home before 10 o'clock in the evening. And I didn't get to spend much time with my then five-year-old son at all. At 43, my priorities were all wrong. I prioritised work ahead of family, friends, and even my own health. And that was madness in reality. If I can put some context behind that statement, we'd actually had difficulty having a child, my wife and I. It had taken us 13 years before we were finally blessed with a child. So you would have thought that with that kind of background, that I would have spent more time with him and less time at work. But that wasn't the case. And I think my father knew this, which is why he uttered those words to me in our last conversation. One of the things that was particularly alarming in the years leading up to my retirement was that my health had really deteriorated. I weighed 17 stone. If I can also put that in context, I only weigh 13 stone nine now. So business and my working life was taking a real toll on me. 17 stone was quite a weight to be lugging around and it was 100% the result of my working lifestyle. Work was all about corporate lunches, events, entertainment and late nights. Often I didn't get home until late in the evening or even early in the morning and it was taking a toll on my health. I was stressed, I was overweight, I felt depressed often and I was often in a really bad mood. And looking back on it, I can't understand why I didn't do something about it until the words that my father spoke to me. If I hadn't have finally made the decision to quit my business at 44, I might not even have made it to 74, which was obviously the age that my dad had died. And at the very least, I owed it to my son to do something about it. So I did, I made the decision to retire the opportunity to sell the business came up. My business partners and I decided it was a good opportunity. 
somebody had approached us and decided they wanted to buy our business and I seized the opportunity to quit and start a new life. Retirement hasn't exactly been a bed of roses. The first six months were fantastic, a real honeymoon period. I didn't miss much at all. It was the summer, I got to spend a lot of time with my young son, we did a lot of travelling. Yeah, a real honeymoon period. But then the British winter set in and I started to sink into a bit of a mood, started to miss things about work, things that used to get on my nerves in the past. I started missing them, meetings would you believe, interaction with people. But the reality is, the retirement decision was the best one that I ever made. The reason for that is that after 12 months, I settled into a routine. I started getting into the job or the role, if you want to call it a job, of being a stay at home dad. I loved every minute of it. I took my son to school. I picked him up at night. I went to practically every sporting event and it was the biggest reason for retiring and it was the most beneficial thing that I got. Spending time with him and chatting with him in the car as we went to school and came home from school are just moments that I can never get back. So here are the three main benefits of retiring at 44. Number one is relationships. I got to spend a lot of time with my son and we developed a very close relationship that still exists to this day. I don't think if I'd have stayed at work and not retired that I would have been as close to him as I actually am. So that was a big benefit. My wife and I also got to spend a lot of time together and do the things that we'd never ever really done. We'd just gone on holiday and had date nights and things like that. But we got to do a lot of things together. We went visiting various cities around the UK. We went walking in the countryside. In between pickup time from our son at dropping him at say 8 a.m. and then picking him up again at three o'clock, we actually did a lot of things. And that was a great benefit of retiring. I began my retirement with no friends. I've talked about that in other videos which I'll list below. But I managed to make some really good new friendships in retirement and spend some time with them. That was one of the big benefits also of retirement, a chance to focus on friendships. None of them, by the way, were people that I used to work with. The second main benefit of retiring was the impact on my health. I got to go to the gym. I even signed up with a personal trainer to, to try and shift some of the weight and it worked. Also, there was all the walking that I mentioned previously with my wife. So my health was good. I went down from somewhere nearly 17 stone to around about 15, which was a couple of stone lighter and I felt a lot better for it. Although I have to say, now that I'm 13 stone nine, I feel even better. So probably I could have put a little bit more effort into that. But yeah, definitely my health benefited. Although there is a little bit of a legacy, I think, from the corporate world and all the lunches and events and restaurants that I used to go to during that period. Uh, I've got a dodgy gallbladder. And as I'm making this video, I've still got three months to go before I have a visit to the surgeon to have it removed. But uh, more on that in uh, future videos. And the final major benefit of retiring early was that I got to travel the world. I got to go to places that I would never would have been to before. My holidays when I was working, I tended not to want to go too far. Um, I like to fly two, three hours to get to somewhere. So Portugal was somewhere that we used to go a lot. In fact, after we retired, we still spent a lot of time in Portugal, but there was more time to explore the world. And we did. We went to New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, Brazil, the Caribbean, the west coast of America. We really packed it in and our young son came with us. Memories were fantastic. Things that will live with me until the day I die. Before I wrap up this video, I just want to talk about two of the biggest regrets of the dying, which come from the excellent book, The Five Top Regrets of the Dying by Bronnie Ware, who was a palliative nurse caring for people at the end of life. The first regret, that I think we should all take notice of, and it's one that I didn't take notice of until after my father passed away, was that I wish I hadn't worked so hard. And that one is particularly common among men who've missed their children's youth and missed much of the companionship of their wives. On their deathbeds, they do regret having worked so hard. So that's one for us all to ponder about. And the question I'll ask you if you're 50 or over 
and you're still working you're still working hard still trying to grind it out climb corporate ladders whether that be for acknowledgements that sort of thing i know for some people they have to work i'm, I'm well aware of that I get lots of comments from people saying that I'm really lucky to have had a chance to retire at 44 and I know that, I know some people are not so lucky. But if you can retire, but you're still working, then the big question I would ask you is why? Second big regret is I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends and I'm really guilty of that one. Once my business took off and I got immersed in it, I dropped my friends. It wasn't a deliberate thing, we just kind of drifted apart. And I do regret that, that will be a big regret. Some of them I've managed to make up, we've actually got back in touch and I now have them back in my lives, thank goodness. But some of them, unfortunately, I don't. But that is one of the biggest regrets of the dying, that they don't stay in touch with old friends. They don't realise the value of friendship until it's far too late. So I'm not saying that you should all quit working and retire early, I know that's not possible for everybody. But all I'm saying is if you can, then you should. If you can't, then what I'm asking you to do is just take a look at your priorities. Can you work less, spend more time with your family? Because if you can, you probably should. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.